All right, hey, awesome students. Uh, I wanna go over how to use rhetoric to ace an interview really quickly, as briefly as we can. Use our advanced understanding of rhetoric to understand how we can apply that in real world contexts to convince other people that what we want is maybe what's best for them. We're gonna get to the dark and light side of rhetoric. This is for an upper division composition course. Uh, this is a little higher level. Let's just actually get right to it. Okay, so rhetoric traditionally understood is persuasive speech. And here we're hoping to persuade our audience to give us the job that we are interviewing for. Presumably be, we're interviewing because we want that job. You probably heard of ethos, which is about our character or credibility. Pathos, which is appeals to emotion. And logos, which is our appeal to logic. I'll make a nice Venn diagram here. What's interesting here is that our traditional understanding of rhetoric is what we can say, what kind of argument we can present to encourage someone to act, change, or think a certain way, namely that we would be the best candidate for this position. And it's really important here to differentiate between ethical and unethical use of rhetoric in this context. The dark side, which you know I'm not advocating for here, is a form of manipulation. So I'm gonna mind control you into doing what I want you to do which is unethical because it diminishes our respect for another human, being, another human being's ability to choose what's best for them. On the light side here, we're actually opening to help to change and to respect the biggest one, the choices of another human being. So we're not trying to, this is an essential aspect here. If we look at advanced rhetorical theory, invitational rhetoric or Rogerian rhetorical theory, I am inviting myself and another person to come to a deeper understanding whether or not I am the best person for this interview. So instead of going into the interview really trying to get the job, which puts you at a place of tension and makes it harder to do the interview well, I'm going into the interview respecting the choice of the hiring manager, helping them and the team and yourself decide whether or not this is a job in an environment you actually want to work in. And that shift where instead of me trying to get this job from you and actually me trying to help you make the best decision and help me make the best decision whether or not I actually want to work in this environment is the key to using rhetoric in the sense where I am using my communication as a way to discover with you whether or not I'm the best position or best candidate for this position. And so this is kind of the background when I say rhetoric, persuading another person to think, act, or do act in a certain way. In this context, none of us like to be mind pushed. Um, we like to make our own decisions, and that is a move that you can use ethos, goodwill, good understanding, and a good sense to make your emotional and logical appeals why you may be the best candidate. Okay, so in terms of when we get into the interview, what it is that we're doing the strategies to um, do this well, I'm gonna say number one is listening. And interestingly, we're listening to them, not only listening to the questions as they ask them, and it's totally okay to bring in a little notepad and have like a, to make just a little bit of notes on what you, on what they're saying, as long as that notepad doesn't interfere with your ability to listen to them. What's maybe not so intuitive here is that we want to listen to them while you're speaking. So listen to them while you speak. This takes practice, especially when you're nervous. When I'm speaking, I'm listening for cues from bo for body language or other cues that they're giving, leaning in because they want to hear more, or leaning back because they're kind of done with you talking about the question that they just asked. 
You are practicing listening to the room and listening to them as you speak your responses and adjusting in real time as much as possible. Next big one is that you have curiosity. And generally speaking, one of the most powerful interview questions they're going to ask you is, do you have any questions for us at the end? Innocent question. But there's a a universe of possibility in how you respond to that question. Your genuine curiosity about their environment, their team culture, what paid opportunities, if there are any paid opportunities for professional development, how you want to present the, how you want to present yourself to them hinges in large part of your curiosity of what it's like to work there, what they love or don't love about their jobs, and you have to be tasteful, again, listening to how much and how much room you have to ask the questions that you have. Come prepared with questions. This is also a really great opportunity for you to demonstrate that you have done a ton of research on their position. So if your questions, don't ask questions that you could have found on their website. Don't ask questions that are immediately obvious that you should have been able to find out on your own because that doesn't show that you have good ethos. It's not a good reason to hire you. When you ask a really insightful or interesting question based on careful research that shows you really want this job, that looks really, really good. You also want to be, you can kind of have a role of power depending on the situation here, that you're curious whether or not you really want this job, that you are entertaining other offers, that you are a, a good catch, and that you're not going to settle for a workplace that overworks you and doesn't respect you or doesn't share your values of inclusion and diversity or whatever those might be, which connects to the next one. These all need to be practiced, by the way. So it's a good idea to practice with somebody else. This is a sense of confidence that you are, you're worth it. You are an asset. And if you, the one that I use is, they'd be lucky to have me. If, if, and this is a nice thing that my mom told me once, and I've remembered it. They would be lucky to have you. So if you're wondering about having enough confidence for the position, um, hear someone saying to you that they would be lucky to have you. Be confident. And the best way next to do that, and this is the last one, is to just have a growth mindset. Interviewing is a skill. It's a weird kind of skill, and it's a skill that's changing all the time. Um, and one way to do interviewing well is to go into the interview with this attitude that I'm going to get better at interviewing here. It also takes your the pressure off of trying to get the job, which puts you more at ease for just showing up and doing your best and trying to get better at learning, um, which you know is more is more attractive than someone that really needs the job in a lot of cases. This growth mindset also, when as soon as you leave the interview, it's good to write down the questions that you did not expect or write down the questions that you wish you could have done better and what you would have done better. So you can kind of use each opportunity. You know, like I've gotten questions like, what books are you reading right now? Great question that you should have an answer for. Um, other, th other, other ways that you can um, ask or answer those questions better. Uh, if you focus on a growth mindset in the interview, it's going to show that you're the kind of person that wants to get better. And I think it's these subtle interpersonal cues that people can read and your intention going into it. It's why I say that practicing the light side of rhetoric of really helping another person make the best choice for them and hoping that that best choice is you is a big thing. And then there's one last thing. I think it's really important to be yourself. If you are using rhetoric to get the job because you want the job so much that you're going to lose yourself in this process, like so you just got this, got the job that you wanted by pretending that you're someone else, I don't know. It sounds exhausting to me. So this is a big overview of how to use rhetoric to ace an interview. We went over rhetoric as a mode of persuasive speech where we use our character, credibility, emotional appeals, and logic to persuade another person to accept what hopefully what is good for us is also good for them. 
I'm suggesting that this is less about manipulation and convincing another person and more about offering a, a mode of a gesture of offering help to give to help them create a change that they want to create, i.e. finding the best candidate. And you're respecting their decision to make that, but you're showing up in the assumption that you may be the best candidate. And in any case, they would be lucky to have you. You're listening to the room. You're listening to the situation as much as possible, the rhetorical situation. You're listening to them as you speak, as for cues of when you should lean in or when you should lean back, when you should say more and when you should say less. You're curious about the position that you can't, and you've generated some good questions that aren't immediately apparent, but that show you've done your research. You're confident that they would be lucky to have you. And that, that's the last thing, another really important point. If they don't hire you, they oftentimes they pass up on really good candidates because you're just not a good fit there. That's why it's really important to have a growth mindset. You're trying to get better at interviewing as a whole, not just trying to get this job, even if it's the job you really, really, really want, which encourages and helps you be yourself regardless of the outcomes. I hope this helped. Definitely put any questions that you have. All of this is in a highly situational. So what works in one interview might not work in another one. It's also complicated by virtual interviews. I didn't go anything into Zoom, um, but hopefully you can figure that out. Let me know if I can help further and hope this helps. Thank you.